Hello everyone, I'm Kenshin. Welcome to, Talking History. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share. Also, don't forget to turn on the notification bell. Thank you. Today's historical discussion is about the infamous top 10 arms dealers. Do you all remember before the start of the Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2022, when American WNBA star Griner was sentenced to nine years in prison for possession of drugs and smuggling, after carrying a marijuana vape pen into Russia. In early November 2022, her appeal failed, and she was subsequently sent to a remote penal colony for her sentence. At that time, the US government insisted that this was an illegal arrest, and proposed exchanging Griner's freedom for the release of Russian armed smuggler Bout, but Russia took no further action until November 11, when negotiations were finally accepted. However, on December 8, the two sides finally reached an agreement, and Viktor Bout, the Russian arms dealer known as the Merchant of Death, who was originally sentenced to 25 years, was allowed to leave the federal prison in Marion, Illinois, also known as Little Guantanamo, and return to Russia. Of course, he had close ties to the Russian military intelligence department, and Russia was eager to swap prisoners fearing he might reveal too many secrets. We all know that the arms industry is a truly global business. Representatives for the sale of firearms, ammunition, and other large weapons receive orders from around the world, and as long as there is money to be made, there will always be corrupt or criminal individuals seeking to profit from the market. They travel far and wide to transport and distribute weapons to earn substantial cash, often trying to stay one step ahead of authorities and business competitors. This brings Changson to think of the 10 most notorious arms dealers in modern history, these individuals who can truly be called merchants of death. Let's get to know these demons who only know money and consider human lives as nothing. 10th, Adnan Khashoggi. In addition to being a very successful Saudi Arabian businessman, he was also a prominent arms dealer. Educated in the United States, now 76 years old, he was the world's richest man in the 1980s. He began his arms dealing career in the 1960s, acting as an intermediary between American companies and the Saudi government. One of his most famous clients was Lockheed Corporation, now Lockheed Martin, which paid him $106 million in commissions in the early 1970s. He famously used tax havens like Switzerland to hide the details of his financial transactions. He was arrested along with Imelda Marcos, the widow of the exiled president of the Philippines, Ferdinand Marcos, in the Iran-Contra affair in 1988, but was acquitted two years later. He currently resides in Monaco. 9th, Dale Stoffel. He was actively involved in the reconstruction efforts after the Iraq war and was known for his penchant for cigars and frequently carrying a machine gun, a popular image of mercenaries. In 2003, his company, Y Oak Technology, signed its first contracts with the newly formed Iraqi Defense Ministry, ultimately totaling over $40 million with the new Iraqi government. In the year before his death, he, with a goatee, openly criticized the irregular payment methods of Iraqis for his efforts and those of others like him, and accused rampant corruption. He was killed in 2004 while en route to Baghdad. He was owed $24.7 million shortly before his death. 8. Musa bin Shamisha. He was a Bangladeshi business tycoon known for his involvement in international arms trading and many other commercial enterprises in the 1970s and 1980s. This high-profile figure was affectionately referred to as the Prince Musa by South Asian media. However, he was also known for his dealings with other dark horse arms dealers on this list such as Adnan Khashoggi. It is said that his Swiss bank account with a value of $7 million was frozen due to abnormal transactions. His company, DATCO, was established in 1974 and mainly dealt with global arms equipment, including tanks, fighter jets, and ballistic missiles. His love for excessive behavior was just as famous as his arms deals. 7. Samuel Cummings he was an American arms dealer and the founder of the International Armament Corporation, which virtually monopolized the global private arms sales market, earning him the title of the undisputed king of arms trading philosophers by the New York Times. 
He was recruited by the CIA as a weapons expert in 1950 and traveled around Europe in the early 1950s, purchasing large quantities of surplus weapons circulating on the black market from World War II, which gave him the ability to establish his arms trading company and dominate the U.S. small arms market in the 1950s and 1960s. Of course, he also dealt with many famous international leaders to expand his business, including communist Cuba's Fidel Castro, whom he sold a batch of AR-10 rifles to, but this also angered the Dominican Republic's leader Rafael Trujillo General, Samuel Cummings died at the age of 71 in 1998 after a series of stroke symptoms. 6. Fares Manor. He was the most notorious arms dealer in Yemen and held the official position of governor of the Sadar province in the northwest of Yemen. Despite his high status, the UN Security Council noticed more of his illegal activities and put his name on a list of arms dealers accused of trading weapons to Somali insurgents, with the organization also suspected of having links to Al-Qaeda. In addition to being accused of espionage for the late Libyan leader Colonel Muammar Gaddafi in exchange for hundreds of millions of dollars. In March 2011, after fighting broke out between pro-government tribesmen and manor supported Hothi insurgents, he was appointed governor of the newly established Sadar province, but was also accused of providing weapons to the latter. Fifth, Sarkis Sokanalian. Born in 1929, he was known as the Merchant of Death and rose to prominence during the Cold War and became a major arms dealer during periods of significant political conflict. He became infamous for being Saddam Hussein's most important weapons supplier in the 1980s. However, with full knowledge and support from the CIA, besides selling weapons to Iraq during the Iran-Iraq War, he also sold weapons to militia groups during the Lebanese Civil War. Additionally, during the Falklands War, he sold weapons to Ecuador, Nicaragua, and Argentina. His luck ran out after the first Gulf War when he was convicted for possessing weapons and intending to sell them to Iraq, sentenced to six years in prison initially, which was later reduced to two years, ending his life as an arms dealer on October 5, 2011. Fourth, Monza al qasa Born in Syria, he had the charming title Prince of Marbella, but was better known as an infamous international arms dealer. He began his arms trading career in the early 1970s and claimed that the Yemeni government asked him to buy weapons from Poland for them. He lived in London from 1972 to 1984, but was later expelled from the UK by the government on charges of trafficking weapons and drugs. He moved from London to Marbella, where he gained the nickname Prince of Marbella. Further allegations of arms dealing followed including selling weapons to the hijackers of the Achille Lauro cruise ship and assisting the terrorists, as well as profiting millions of dollars by selling weapons to Croatia, Bosnia, and Somalia during the UN arms embargo on these three countries. He was arrested in 2006 due to a carefully crafted trap set by the D and convicted. He was arrested in Madrid in 2007 and extradited to the United States a year later, where he is currently imprisoned. Third, Jean Bernard Lasno. Born in France, he was arrested in Switzerland in 2002, bringing an end to nearly three years of arrest requests from Argentine courts and Interpol. However, despite facing charges of arms trafficking and fraud in European courts, surprisingly, he was allowed to live peacefully in South Florida for over a decade. He conducted his arms business from his mansion, selling weapons to anyone interested, with China and Somalia being just two of the suspicious buyers. According to his own estimates, his Caribbean group sold $1 to $2.5 million worth of weapons annually, with accusations of selling thousands of tons of Argentine weapons to Croatia and Ecuador from 1992 to 1995. He even boasted that his website could help facilitate his transactions, which entangled him in a complex network of corruption and scandals, the true extent of which may never be fully revealed. Second, Leonid Minin. Born in Ukraine in 1947, he was also an internationally infamous arms dealer who moved to Israel in the 1970s. Later, he was arrested by German authorities for using false identification documents and suspected art theft. 
He reportedly traded weapons with clients including Liberian dictator Charles Taylor and the revolutionary United Front operating in Sierra Leone. Minin's arms deals were believed to be supplied by the Russian arms company Aviatrend, which was also involved in money laundering activities with the ousted Yugoslav president Slobodan Milosevic. In 2000, he was arrested by Italian authorities for illegal arms trafficking and sentenced to two years in prison. If you remember the 2005 movie, Lord of War, the character partially originates from him, along with Sarkis Sokanalian and the next character, Victor Bout. First, Victor Bout. He is the most notorious arms smuggler on this list, and after a five-year operation by the DEA, he was extradited from Thailand to the United States in 2010, charged with illegally arming the Colombian Revolutionary Armed Forces to fight against the U.S. military. He was found guilty by a jury, and it was speculated at the time that he might be sentenced to life imprisonment, but the result was a 25-year sentence. It was reported that he made a lot of money transporting goods through Africa and the Middle East in the 1990s and 2000s. And this former Soviet military translator might have fueled the flames of wars in Africa by providing large quantities of weapons, earning him the nickname Sanctions Buster in the 1990s, accused of violating UN arms embargoes against Angola, Liberia, Sierra Leone, and the Congo over a decade. In 2001, he was suspected of smuggling gold and cash out of Afghanistan. However, after a decade of Russian rescue efforts and finally having enough conditions to exchange prisoners, he was finally able to return to Russia, but the bigger benefit was avoiding him really revealing the greater evils of Russia. Back to the present, after Viktor Bout was arrested by the DEA in Thailand in 2008, Russian officials continued to protest his treatment and accused the D of framing him. Steve Zissou, Bout's lawyer in New York, warned in July 2022, there will be no exchange of any Americans unless Bout is allowed to return home. But insiders believe that Moscow's anger has nothing to do with the facts of this case but rather his deep connections with the Russian military intelligence circles. Lee Wolofsky, who served as a National Security Council official during the Clinton administration and led the hunt for him, said, it is obvious that he has important connections with the Russian government circles.